I am so glad you're here for another episode of Mechanism Monday, where every Monday we ride out the electron pushing arrow mechanisms for different chemical transformations. In last week's video, I asked if you could solve the mechanism for this chemical transformation. So if you haven't had a chance, pause the video now and try it independently. And make sure you stick around to the end because I'll give you another mechanism to solve for next week's video. In this chemical transformation, we're turning a five membered ring that's a diketone into a six membered ring that's also a diketone. And we're doing this through the addition of sodium hydroxide, which remember is a base that you can treat as OH minus and water and this reaction takes place very quickly especially at three minutes specifically and this is important because this reaction under a slightly different set of conditions can create an entirely new product which we'll see in the second half of this video there are several different locations on this reactant that the hydroxide group which is a strong base can react one of those reactions is to form an enolate using this alpha carbon hydrogen position, which is more acidic than most carbon hydrogen bonds. Specifically, what can happen is this base can come and deprotonate that proton, which is going to move these electrons down between these two carbon atoms, and it's going to kick up these pi electrons to be placed on the oxygen, forming an enolate. And the product of that transformation is still going to be that five-membered ring, which has the ketone on it, as well as this ketone located at this position, except for now what we've done is we formed an enolate at this position. So anytime you see an alkene attached to a carbon oxygen with a negative charge on it, this is called an enolate. And from here, what can happen is those electrons, which are located on this oxygen atom, can come back down to reform the carbonyl carbon. And in doing so, that is gonna make these pi electrons in this carbon-carbon double bond act as a nucleophile, specifically at this carbon position. And don't forget, we still have this R group up here. So when it reacts at this carbonyl carbon position, it's going to kick up these pi electrons to be located on the oxygen, giving us a negatively charged species here, thus conserving our charges. And this reaction is going to combine this carbon to this carbon position. And notice that that means we're forming a one, two, three-membered ring or cyclopropane adjacent to this five-membered ring. So then the product of this transformation has that five-membered ring still on it with the ketone here, this R group, and now what we've done is we formed a three-membered ring at this position, and here is our negatively charged oxygen, which came and was formed at this position. And the rest of our species is that ketone, which we reformed in this enolate reaction. And now the next step, since we formed this three-membered ring that is fused to this five-membered ring, this is gonna have a lot of cyclic strain or torsional strain, meaning that the next step is likely to free up that strain formed from that three-membered ring, so bringing down these pi electrons to reform our carbonyl carbon, is going to open up that ring by taking these electrons and moving them between these two carbons, and in doing so, this is gonna kick up the pi electrons to this oxygen, thus again, conserving our charges. And this is actually how we form that six-membered ring. So notice that this is gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons, and that is how we form this six-membered cycle hexane ring. So the product of this transformation is going to be that six-membered ring where now at this position we have a negatively charged oxygen and there's an alkene located here because these electrons came to form an alkene. We have reformed our carbonyl group or our ketone at this position. We still have our R group here and then we still have this other ketone species at this position. So remember in our very first step we took hydroxide and deprotonated this alpha carbon hydrogen thus forming water, which means that there is water, in addition to there being water as a reactant, located here where these electrons can come back down, reforming our carbonyl ketone, and then these pi electrons in this alkene will come and deprotonate water, thus reforming our sodium hydroxide and giving us our final product. Now this is the overall transformation that you were tasked with solving for this particular video, but I want you to pay attention to this very first step here. So notice that this original alpha carbon deprotonation or enolate formation occurred by deprotonating this alpha carbon hydrogen. If we were to change the conditions just slightly by potentially elongating the reaction time, maybe adding some excess sodium hydroxide, it's also possible that that hydroxide could react at several different positions. On the screen is the second set of conditions that lead to completely different product transformations. Pause the video now and see if you can figure out what is the electron pushing arrow mechanism that would lead to this chemical transformation. 
transformation. In this chemical transformation, we're actually using very similar conditions, the same reactant, sodium hydroxide, some water, we just have a longer reaction time. And notice in this case, we're not extending or expanding the size of our ring. What we're actually doing is doing some functional group transformations, and it looks like a few other things are moving around in this overall chemical transformation. One of the types of reactions that can occur when you have sodium hydroxide, which remember is just OH- when dissolved in water, that can happen is kind of like a nucleophilic acyl substitution, where this hydroxide can come and attack this carbonyl carbon, kicking up these pi electrons, which can come back down, and when doing so, it would kick off whatever the R group is attached to that carbonyl group. In this case, that R group is a carbon-carbon chain. So in fact, that's what can happen. So now these carbon-carbon electrons can move over to this location, being between these two carbon atoms, thus kicking up these pi electrons to give us an enolate species at this location. And this is how we're gonna generate a carboxylic acid at this carbon position. So the product of this transformation is going to have a carboxylic acid located down here, where it's formed at this position. And then the rest of our ring is still there, except for it's no longer a ring, and instead it's an enolate species, where you have this carbon-carbon double bond, a carbon to oxygen, with a negative charge on it, and then the rest of our molecule looks largely the same where we have this ketone. And we also still have our R group at this position. And then from here, the next step that's going to occur, which was very similar to in our last transformation, is that since we've generated water following the addition of our reactants, what can happen is these electrons can come down, reform this carbonyl carbon, and taking these electrons from this alkene and going and abstracting this proton to give us a neutral molecule. And so the product of this transformation is largely the same, except for we have regenerated our ketone here, which is going to give us the rest of the molecule looking relatively similar, where now we have this carboxylic acid down at this position, and this is how we form this carboxylic acid and regenerate this neutral molecule. But remember, we're regenerating hydroxide at this position, so we can go on and continue to do alpha carbon chemistry where we're forming enolates, because now we have an alpha carbon hydrogen here, which can be readily deprotonated to form an enolate species back again but it's instead of being on this side of this carbon to oxygen bond, now it's on the opposite side. And this is going to give us that new enolate species where we have our carbon oxygen, which is negatively charged, and our carbon to carbon double bond is now on this side of the molecule. And the rest of the molecule still has this carboxylic acid as well as this carbon chain, which is also going to have our ketone on it. And it's this next step that allows us to reform this five-membered ring. So notice that if these electrons come back down to reform the carbonyl carbon oxygen, oxygen double bond, then these pi electrons can come and attack this carbonyl carbon, which is going to be electrophilic. And notice if we count the carbons, that's one, two, three, four, five carbons, which is how we close this ring, giving us our five carbon ring. So then the product of this transformation is going to be that five membered ring, which we've just generated through this process. It's going to reform that ketone at this position. We still have our R group. We have our carboxylic acid. And this carbon, which is now going to be attached to an oxygen that's negatively charged, is also going to have a methyl group coming off of it. So this is the methyl group that was located at this position. And remember, at this step, we generated water by deprotonating this alpha carbon hydrogen that allowed us to do our enolate chemistry. But now we have that water still present, which can be deprotonated by this negatively charged oxygen to give us an alcohol and regenerate hydroxide. So then the product of this transformation is going to be largely the same, where we have our five-membered ring with a ketone, our R group at this position, we have an alcohol here with a methyl group attached to the same carbon, and then we have our carboxylic acid present at this position. And now what can happen is since we have this alpha carbon hydrogen, that hydroxide, which we reformed here, can come down and deprotonate that alpha carbon hydrogen because this is going to be a very nucleophilic base, which will come and deprotonate this, moving these pi electrons down and kicking off our hydroxide. And notice that what's happening is that we're taking hydroxide, turning it into water, using this to do an elimination reaction, which regenerates that hydroxide. And this is actually how we generate the final product. So notice that largely the reaction is the exact same as the first reaction mechanism that we walked through. All that's different is that we're changing some of the conditions ever so slightly. And this is an important concept for chemistry by simply adding an extra amount of reactant, allowing a reaction to go 
hold for even longer, like kinetic versus thermodynamic products. For example, if you remember back to your organic chemistry classes, this is another example where slightly modifying the reaction conditions can have a huge impact on the types of products that are formed. If you enjoyed this week's mechanism, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. For next week, I'd love to see if you could figure out the electron pushing arrow mechanism for this chemical transformation. Make sure that you subscribe to the channel so that you never miss another mechanism, and I'll see you next Monday.